So um, I'll try to say a few words about something I'm looking at these days. And since uh, it's, it's fun and, uh, and there are connections with what T2 just presented before, so I decided to make a, a, few, sign, a few slides on that. Uh, so the title is quite, uh, is not modest. Huh? I mean, uh, Herbert model. So I'm talking about the Herbert model. Better than that, and give you a question made easy. Made easy, in fact, it's uh, just because I take one simple example. Okay, so um, so let's start. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. So so what I'm going to do is just to comment on the two side two electrons Herbert model. Uh, so uh, the question here exactly the same that. Uh, T2 showed us uh, the last time and a couple of times before, I think also. It's the simplest uh, example of a Herbert model, uh, two sides, one electron up, one electron down. So there are four states. So one, two electrons on the same side, the first side, no electron on the second, and one on each side, and uh, two electrons on the, on the, on the, on the second side. Uh, please, uh, it is expected to be simple. So if so is something uh, not clear, stop, stop me. So the Hamilton matrix is the one that T2 wrote last time, where when you have two electrons on the same side, you have a, a, a potential U diagonal, since it's a potential. The same when you have here, you have a U. You see my, uh, my. Yes. yes. Just a moment. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 But we can hear you. So can you or can you, can't you? Uh, <laughs> if you can increase the volume, it's better. Okay. Uh, like that? Ah, uh, too much. <laughs> like that? Yes. Perfect. It's perfect, c'est parfait comme ça? Okay, so did you hear what I said before or not? Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, it's very strange to speak in the, with this uh, without looking at without seeing people. Okay, so a metric matrix. So I said a diagonal term for two electrons on the same side, repulsion, and the kinetic term, which just that minus t when you uh, one electron move to the uh, 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 to the next neighboring site. Okay, so the matrix is here. The characteristic polynomial to compute the four energies so it's easy to, to to find so it's this one so uh you have uh, four solution one triplet state uh, which essentially is uh, uh, one down minus down one uh no up down down up with the sines minus minus in order to have a triplet and the energy is is e equal zero here you have an energy of U here, which is a singlet uh, combination of that one, which is plus here. And you have two non-trivial states, which are given, the energy is given by this uh, polynomial, second order. And of course, we can easily get the solution. Okay. So um, what I want to say today is, uh, that there are an exact solution for this problem for any number of sites and any number of electrons. Okay, this uh, and uh, this is called uh, the Lieb and Vu solution of 68. And this is based on what we call the bet on that, which has been introduced like better. Uh, and uh, he did, he found the solution for the uh, Heisenberg antifog magnetic chain for any number of spins, okay? And uh, Lieb and Vu generalize the solution when you have essentially electrons moving instead of being fixed at each side of, of the chain, okay? Is it fine? Yes. Yes. So, uh, so what I'm doing here is to write what are the Lieb and Vu equation for the 1D model for two sides and two electrons. So it's exactly the case we have here, okay? It's exactly the same model. So uh, what the Lieb and Vu equation say is that the energy 
is the sum of uh, 2 cosinus k1 and k2. This is exactly the same structure uh, that the solution when u equals 0. You know that when u equals 0, the, so okay, the solution of this uh, matrix is easy to get. And this is gotten like, like that. Except that k1 and k2 now are no longer trivial, like when u equals 0, but are a solution of some equations. Okay. So here I give the equation for L sites uh, and two electrons in the following and the special case of L equal two. So just to the already to insist on the fact that the solution is general. I mean that if you write the matrix for on L sites and uh, two electrons, the size of the matrix will be L to the L to the square L square. Okay, and of course, if L equal uh, one billion, uh, it's com it's difficult to solve. But you can use the equation I write to get the energies. Okay, so so it's important to see that it's uh, it's very general. So in the case of two electrons on L sides, the first equation about the triplet state is trivial. This is this one. This is uh, uh, you get the energy of the triplet state by uh, using this formula and the solution of this, this uh, equation. For the singlet states, it is writing like that. So now we see that it depends on u here. And you have two equations and two unknown, which are k1 and k2. OK? So uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a cute uh, formula. I like it. So now, just a few math. Uh, I mean, I won't enter in the detail here. But just I give the details, but I won't say uh, uh, too much because it's uh, it's just painful. So I wrote them in order to you to to you can you can follow the equations uh, uh, using the slides uh, we put on our Theodor uh, site. Okay. So um, if I did not hear x, the difference of sinus, you get you can rewrite this equation like that. And already, uh, you okay? So I use the first equation. I, I I made some mathematics, and after some manipulation, what I get is this red equation. And so, so this red equation, and there is another one which is here. I, I forgot to say that uh, okay, which is the first equation here. Oh, it's here, the first equation. No? Sorry, I should, uh, my, my, my slide are not clean. Okay, and the second equation is here. So if I take the case of the two sides now, the case we, we saw at the beginning, you have two sides, so L equal two here. So you make tangent of K1 on the left. And here we take uh, the lower solution, which is K1 plus K2 equals zero, which corresponds to here, this, solution of this equation k1 plus k2 is the first solution there are an infinity number of solutions but there is a first one k1 plus k2 equals zero which gives one you inject in that and you get this equation here this equation gives you the value of k1 uh, which gives you the energy and now if you look at this equation and if you Re, 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 remind that the energy here is a sum of uh, two cosinus here k1 equal minus k2 so it's the same cos if i write the energy as minus 2t cos of k1 and I inject here i get that equation for uh, the energy which of course is exactly the same equation as we got by direct diagonalization of the matrix here okay so this is here so it's cute. This um, this uh, this nice form, which is very different from uh, from what we get from uh, exact diagonalization, gives you the same result as it should be. Okay, fine. Now I can look at the graphical solution of that. So essentially, what I wrote is I, I, I made a plot of tangent of k one and this term, and I know that when they cross, it is a solution 
of uh, K1. And of course, K1 depends on U and the crossing will depend, okay? But what happens? Uh, in fact, if you look at this, there is only one solution. We found only one solution. And of course, we know that there are two solutions, okay? So what is the problem? The problem here is, uh, okay, up, 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 up. is it okay for you to follow? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, T2, tell me if there is some problem or if you can hear me, cannot hear me or if, uh, okay, because. I will, okay. Michel, but everything is fine for now. Okay, fine. So if you look at this representation, I cheated a little because of course, if you write like that, the modulus of E is less than 2T because cos is bounded by one. And, uh, and the second solution we don't see, of course, has a magnitude which is larger than 2T and in fact cannot be represented like that. So by writing this, we, didn't, we don't give the general representation of E. So what happens? Uh, it, do, it seems it doesn't work for the second uh, uh, root. And of course, you know what happens. In fact, we have to solve the equation in the complex plane. Okay, the K1 and K2 must be so the Liebvu equation must be solved in the complex plane. So um, I should have, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, when I gave the solution here, I should have written K1, K2 solution in the complex plane of the Liebvu equation. I didn't write it just because uh, kind of, uh, you know, for pedagogical reason, and <laughs> just to give some, um, okay. So now I write K in a complex plane like X plus I, Y. So the energy right now, of course, it gets uh, a real and uh, imaginary parts where you see, of course, uh, it was expected some uh, hyperbolic cosinus uh, here, which is li linked to the fact that we have imaginary number here. And uh, uh, the Im Alors, so now we can do the equation and we can find the result. Here, I, I take a, a, a shortcut. Uh, because we know that the energy must be real, okay? Uh, so it means that the imaginary part must be zero. So this one should be zero. If it can be zero with X equals zero, uh, no, sorry, it can be zero with Y equals zero, but we don't want the solution because this is a solution we get on the real axis, the, the previous solution. So we need to have sinus of x equals zero. So the missing solution must be related to x equal pi, okay? So I inject uh, pi here. So it's minus, minus one, zero, and I get the energy like that as essentially the cos uh, hyperbolic cosinus uh, of uh, y, okay? So it can give me y as a function of e, Okay, so the imaginary part in the complex plane of K has this, uh, this behavior. Uh, so I have just the math in order to get, uh, get the energy. And uh, the equation gives you a solution where you must have plus. And here is the uh, location of the complex K in the complex plane, which gives you uh, the missing solution, okay? So the two solution, two singlet state with non-trivial solution is one with K on the real axis and the other one uh, on the, in the imaginary plane, okay? So, um, what are the general Liebvu equations? So as I have exactly the same structure, here N is a total number of electrons. M is a number of electrons down. This is 
the usual convention, and L is the number of sides. So here you have N equation, N for each electron, where you have the same term as I showed before. And here, instead of a one, you have a product from L equal one to the number of down electrons to this ratio. And in the literature, the K are called the momenta of the Libu equations and lambda are the so-called rapidity. And you have another equation here, which relates the rapidities here to the rapidity and the uh, momenta. So, and the energy is always, is all, uh, again, a sum of cosinus for all electrons plus a constant term here, which is not important. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's fun because uh, you have to find the solution of this coupled set of equation, and this is highly nonlinear, etc. And there is a, a literature, and people work a lot on that solution, and it's, it's a very uh, beautiful uh, solution in terms of uh, what they call string and uh, all kind of. There is a structure, but we can get all the spectrum by uh, solving this equation for any number of sites and any number of electrons. So um, my final, okay, I, I'll show the formula, but my, my final uh, remark is about what T2 did in the complex plane, because um, I mean, if T2 wants to generalize, uh, let, let me just, uh, I was just uh, looking at, okay, so, I'm sorry. I was. So if if Tito, if you want to generalize your results, uh, you should for two states about the fact that uh, the ground state and the first state touch to some exceptional points, etc. You could eventually generalize this to a more particles. I mean more sites, uh, because uh, you see I showed you the equation L is only here. L is only here. And, uh, and in also in this equation here. Uh, you see here, uh, I just mentioned that K, I didn't write that K1 plus K2 equal two pi number N over L because this is not the case because K1 and K2 are complex here. So you have a real part and you have an imaginary part. So it's non-trivial. Okay, so what I say is that if you take a number of sites L, you have this L squared matrix and you can have a, a, a simple structure for the excited states and you can make, uh, if you take U or T imaginary, as T2 said the last time, we can have some, may, maybe some interesting results. And if now you take three or four particles, you have equations which are a little more complex. For example, for four particles, you will have uh, six equation or something like that, uh, four plus two, six equation, and you can get some exact relation uh, between the, uh, the eigenstates and the eigenvalues. Okay, I think it's, uh, I think it's okay. I 